Hello, folks. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, Joshua here. Um, it is Wednesday. It is noon on the Pacific Coast. It is 3 o'clock if you live over on the East Coast with our friends in uh, Atlanta and Georgia and uh, Florida, of course. Welcome to everyone. It's been a while since I've seen you. Um, we had a class last week, um, which was for our... Um, friends at Evergreen in this space, and at that point, we had just released this Kenya, so I'm really excited to bring it to you with the first of the deeper dives for the new year for 2021. What a year it has been. So, this copy you might be familiar with if you follow us on Facebook or you're in our newsletter. We announced it about a week ago, or two weeks ago, technically, so maybe you've already tried it. If not, hopefully today will be the day that inspires you to give this uh, Kenyan copy um, uh, your favor and to get some online. We don't often have a lot of African copies. When you look at our full um, menu of copies, we have a lot of copies from Latin America. Um, we have copies from uh, Sumatra, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea sometimes as well, from that, um, that area of the world. And we, of course, always have some African copies. So I, I personally, I love African copies. I'm always excited when we bring um, new copies in. And this one, um, which is from Ndarawini, is, in fact, um, a, a copy that we've had for several years now. We bring it in seasonally when it's ready. So always uh, a happy time for me when we bring this copy in. So I want to show you um, the, the tasting notes. Uh, so you see I've uh, created an exploration of um, what the coffee notes say. Now, of course, whenever you look at one of our bags of coffee, you'll see that we have uh, um, these notes here on the bottom. Current jasmine stone fruit. Now, I couldn't find any jasmine. <laughs> I could have gotten some tea, I suppose. Um, but I did go out and get something which is a little bit um, uh, close to it in the sense that it's a, it has a pine quality to it. This is, and I couldn't find anything that was necessarily... Um, uh, uh, also, um, uh, like in full on bloom because it does say spring flowers. Uh, it is, <laughs> it is February, but I did find these lovely little kind of, um, pine flowers blooming outside, um, in our garden here at the roastery. So we do have that floral quality, which you'll notice in the cup, dark fruit. So in this case, dark berries, stone fruit, um, represented by this beautiful, lovely, dark fruit, and then also currants, you'll see here. So um, that is kind of a, the representation of the flavor profiles that we're hoping to capture um, when we taste this coffee. Um, I will take us for a moment over to um, our monitor as I prep to make the coffee. Um, I brought us over to uh, the Facebook page, or no, I'm sorry, the, uh, the website page for the coffee, um, and I will always uh, direct you to take a look at um, this area here, which is the, view, the detailed coffee report. Always uh, encourage everyone to go look at those, uh, and in that you'll see that we list um, obviously the origin, subregions, altitudes, varieties, um, which is, you know, of course very important. We've added in a roast profile. This, as you can see, sits um, between the light and what we consider a medium roast profile for, the, for coffees. And then we also discuss um, uh, the relationships involved in how we get that coffee um, to us here in Olympia. So please always take a look at that. Today, I'm going to be doing the clever. You, uh, you a lot of you probably know that I, I like using the clever. And the reason I like uh, working with the Clever for copies is because um, it is, I think, a great transition. If maybe you're used to, you know, a coffee pot at home with a filter and you, you put your coffee in there and it just does it automatically, um, or maybe you made the step over to a French press, right, um, which is a, a kind of a, a more, you know, artisanal way of doing the coffee, right? For a lot of folks, that's one of the first things they, they move over to is the French press. Um, I think that the, uh, the Clever is a, a nice second 
the next step for folks because it's going to allow them to um, not change a whole lot. Um, it brews in full immersion, but also has the addition of paper filtration, which allows us to start um, appreciating some of those probably more subtle flavors that we're talking about when we go through, um, you know, the flavor wheel and the, the, the notes and the, the flavor qualities that we're pulling out, those tasting notes that we have both on the website and on the bag. Um, sometimes paper filtration kind of helps us discern some of those things. So that's why I, I like using it. Um, I do want to uh, point you to uh, this aspect uh, of learning for you. If you have not seen these before, we do have here um, a tutorial which you can watch. I'm going to put it into the, uh, the chat down here so you can see it. Um, those were created by Brendan in Florida. They're really helpful. I'm going to be using its guidelines today as we brew this coffee. So um, let's go ahead and do, 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 do. Oh, nope. There we are. Nope, that's still not it. There we go. <laughs> uh, we'll put back over on the, the Kenya report here. I'm actually going to pull up the tasting wheels. We can talk a little bit about that as we um, go through the coffee. So we're starting with our uh, our clever filter has been put in. We fold the bottom and the side. See these crimped edges? We fold them down a little bit. It makes it fit a little bit more snug in here. We turn on our scale. Now, uh, with any of these paper filtration methods, we're always going to want to um, pre-rinse the filter a little bit, right? And that's to get any lingering paper qualities out of that filter. It also helps the, the paper bond to the side of the vessel there, right? It also pre-warms it a little bit, so not as much thermal energy is spent heating up the, the device and is instead spent in extracting flavor from the coffee. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and clear. We're going to add our coffee. A little bit shy. That's no worries. I'm going to tear again, and we're putting in 300 liters of water. So I remember to, before, if you've seen me do these, I'll uh, be watching on the screen, and which is sometimes a little bit of a lag, right? I'll watch the number increase on the screen as I'm pouring the water. And... Uh, and then, of course, I'll over pour a little bit. So I'm going to go up to, I'm going to pour it a little under 300 just because we had 18 grams, not 20. Here we go. All right. So there, that is set. And oh, <laughs> I don't have my lid. <laughs> Always something to forget, but it's all right because I have a long reach. Let me place my lid right on there. Okay. And start the timer. Away we go. Um, all right. Well, what have we been up to here? I'll tell you. If I, if you can probably kind of see by looking over there, it's pretty nice and sunny out, which is awesome. Um, and however, if you uh, are on the east coast, up in the north, you've been hammered by snow. Um, and uh, I don't know what it's like down uh, Georgia, Florida way, although one of my compatriots there was complaining about how cold it was. Um, but it's been lovely here um, throughout January and February. Um, however, we are about to, they say, possibly receive snow. If you grow up in the Northwest, you know that does not happen very often. But if you're watching this, and especially if you have kids, you should be on the standard Pacific Northwest high alert for the possibility of snow. And of course, what that means is that you need to have all your snow gear up and by the door and ready. Because if it does in fact snow in the Pacific Northwest, you will need to be out that door with those kids in that snow, having your snowball fights, building your snow forts if there's enough snow, um, rolling very, very small snowmen, and uh, most importantly, sledding immediately. Because as we know, if we sit back and enjoy it with a nice hot cup of coffee, looking outside at the winter wonderland being created, it could be just a few hours before it's gone. So this, consider this yet again uh, uh, a warning that the snow is possibly coming. 
everybody always laughs at us for calling it a snow apocalypse or a snowmageddon. Sure, we overreact a little bit when it snows here. But really what's underneath that, for all of us who grew up here, is the realization it's more about being absolutely prepared not to navigate driving in the snow up our big hills um, or the possible shutdowns of roads with only an inch or two. It's that we only have a very short window to go out and enjoy that snow. And that is why we go into snowpocalypse alert. Because you really have to be ready the minute you see it to, uh, to go and uh, enjoy yourself. So uh, let that be um, yet again a warning for all of you. Now, our directions here were that we crack this crust. See that crust that's been developed here? We're just going to... A lot of brewing has to do with um, agitation and ensuring that, you know, um, that the coffee uh, gets fully saturated. And so... Um, that's why you'll often see us talking about cracking the crust or breaking it or, or doing a stirring method with some of these pour in um, ways of making pour, pour for uh, ways of making coffee is that we want to reincorporate any of that coffee back into what's considered the slurry, the, the mixture of water and coffee. If it, as it rises to the top, as it, there's some uh, off gassing that occurs um, as the water is exchanged for any gas found in those grounds. Um, in order to achieve contact and therefore extract flavors, um, it will also rise a bed of coffee up to the top. So that's why we just reincorporate it at the two minute mark. And we're shooting for four minutes. I do want to take a look at this um, fl flavor wheel. So it talked about some of these dark fruits. We have berries over here in this area. Right? That's more, you know, Maybe probably over here, dried fruits is more of the qualities we're looking at. The aromatic impression of um, dark fruit that is sweet and slightly brown, associated with dried plums, prunes. I think um, when we talk about uh, currants, as was discussed in the in the tasting notes, that's kind of what we're what we're thinking about are those qualities. So here we are at the four minute mark. We'll go ahead and decant the coffee. Another reason that uh, that I love the uh, the clever is that last act, which is just so simple when you're in the morning. Lots of folks who are used to an automatic coffee maker in home um, uh, talk about not wanting to have to go through the headache of making a cup of coffee because they're tired, right? That's the great... Um, that's the great uh, 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 dueling issues with that first cup of coffee in the morning is you want a good cup of coffee, but you're tired. So you know, how do you make a good coffee when your head's a little bit foggy, right? And you've just gotten up. Um, this, again, another great bridge. Um, it takes um, investing a little bit into some knowledge, right, that we help you with here, maybe getting a scale, a nice kettle as well, um, and then using those ratios and proportions we talk about. But really, it's so simple. You put the coffee in, you put the water in, you wait two minutes, you stir it, you wait another two minutes, and then you let it decant. Um, and you don't, you don't have to uh, do anything besides that because it just decants right into your cup. And there we have it, right? And of course, you know, when you're done, you take it off, it does not drip anymore. No more dripping. It's finished. We'll take a look at that, that bed in there actually a little bit, shall we? Maybe nice kind of see. There is, you can see there, see what I'm talking about here when we talk about paper filtration. Look at that. So that is, you know, fines of the coffee. Stuff that was ground and got pulverized by those burrs and make a very fine dust. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, a good grinder helping reduce fines or, or, or get a more even, um, evenly crushed bean. So we have uniformity of size in those grounds. But it's going to happen. We're going to have those, fi those fines that develop. And, you know, a certain aspect of them, they're so fine that they get carried right through and they get carried into the water. And we're actually, you know, ingesting them, right? We're not just 
um, tasting what's been extracted off of, off of or through the grounds, but literally there is a, a certain amount of actual coffee that we, of course, are, are that we have in our cup when we're all done. Um, so, but when you think about a French press, right, that, um, that French press has the metal filter and it, in fact, um, is not able to, to keep those, all those fines out of the cup of coffee. And so when we talk about the discerning the difference between a, a metal filtration like in a French press, which has the same um, full steeped quality of coffee, the grounds simply are in hot water and extracting, the water's not passing through the grounds, the, the grounds are in immersion in the water the entire time. These two methods are the same in that sense, but with the addition of the paper filter, what we're going to do is we're going to quote unquote clean the coffee up a little bit, which it, we think, uh, or I think, I should I'll speak for myself, um, creates a, a, a different quality to the coffee that allows us to appreciate uh, some of those those flavor notes that we talk about um, in here. So dark fruits, maybe a little plum uh, and currant with some spring floral. Yeah, it's a delicious cup of coffee. Um, I hope that you want to try this new Kenya. I absolutely get the vegetal quality to it, or not vegetal, but floral quality. To me, it does seem a little vegetal, and that just might be the association I have with what <laughs> I chose to show on the plate here today. Um, I hope you try this coffee, and that you um, can either stop into one of our stores or go online and grab the coffee. I'll put a link to it here. You do know, um, of course, that we have a, boop, a discount for you if you do go and order that coffee today. Um, and that discount is, there it is, boom. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. It's going to take me a second, though, because it is at the bottom for some reason. We'll get there. Hold on. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Watch and learn 10. Put that in when you go on to the website and order. you get 10% off of your order. I hope that you... Uh, choose to try this coffee and let us know what you think of it as well. Um, I know that, you know, Bob is receiving coffees all the time from Africa. And those of us who love African coffees um, are look forward to more and more of them coming up. Now, next week at this time, uh, Bob's going to be here and we have some uh, pre-shipped coffees, um, which means these are coffees that he is being sent um, that we've contracted for, and they're sending us, you know, some of the coffee to try out. Um, and so that's pretty exciting. Uh, I just want to say that they, they come from south of the equator in Latin America. So you can, you know, take a look at our menu and kind of figure out what's coming down the pike here. Both countries start with the letter B. And you've had them before. So uh, we're going to try those coffees here next week. Um, we'll send out some notes um, uh, for all of you to look at as we approach that. Thank you so much for your time. Again, it's great to see you in this new year. Try the Kenya and the Darwini um, and let us know what you think. And if you're on the VIP page, um, make sure you see that we have our, our February discount code is up for those of you who are on the Backdoor from Bronson VIP page. Scoot over there, use that code when you order, um, and we look forward to sharing more coffee with you next week. Bye-bye.